What is up guys, it's Big Toe. In this video, I'll be explaining how I created my first game in Unity. So, like everyone that's played the video game before, I wanted to create my own. I wasn't satisfied with the current games, I felt like there was something missing. So at the start of the year, I decided that I'm going to learn how to develop my own unique game. The only problem is, I had no idea how to. I had so many ideas but no way to execute them. I watched a few videos on how to get started with game development and almost all of them said to start small. So that's exactly what I did. I looked for the simplest tutorial on YouTube for the simplest game and I came across this series. It's an 8 part tutorial for a rollable game by Unity. This was the perfect tutorial I needed. Now all I need to do is to follow it and try to understand it as much as I can. How hard could that be? <laughs> oh shit. By the way, all the gameplay footage is from the original Unity tutorial as I didn't record my own project. The first episode showed how to set up a Unity project. I created the sphere and the ground and modified their colors, positions, and sizes. I also set up my game with a ball player. The second tutorial was more interesting. It explained how to create the player movement for the ball. The tutorial guy, yeah, that, that's what I'm going to be calling him, used a component called rigid body. It basically gives the object physics. You know, like gravity and collision and stuff. I didn't really get this, but it works. This was the point where the coding started. It was very daunting at first, but the way the tutorial guy explained it, it was very easy to understand. For every line of code he does, he gives a brief explanation of what it's for. This grabs the input from our player through the keyboard. He didn't overload me with information. Instead, he helped me better understand how coding works in Unity. By the end of the episode, I had a moving ball that can be controlled by the arrow keys. I was really proud of myself, even though I basically just copied the code. It was extremely satisfying to see my creation come to life. This is the great thing about game dev. You get to see your creations work, fail, and do unexpected things. Currently, the camera is fixed. It doesn't follow the player. So on the second episode, tutorial guy showed me how to make the camera follow the player. I was introduced to a feature called parenting. Basically, if an object is parented to another game object, its transform and other properties correlate with the parent. Get it? Yeah, me neither. But this doesn't work as the rotation of the ball is also adopted by the camera. This results in a very odd looking game. Yeah, so instead of parenting the camera to the ball, tutorial guy explained how to make a script that follows the ball's position but not its rotation. Now this part of the coding I didn't really understand at all. Though, surprisingly, it was only a few lines. It worked charmingly, the camera now follows the player smoothly. On the third episode, I set up the play area. I just added wall boundaries to prevent the player from falling infinitely. There's currently no objective to the game, so I added collectibles. The tutorial guy showed me how to create rotating objects that have a shiny material. I placed these objects around the play area. I tested the game out and the objects are there and they rotate but if I collide with them nothing really happens and that's kind of a problem. So on the next episode the tutorial showed me how colliders work. I learned how to detect collisions between objects and to execute code when they're detected. In this case when the ball collides with the collectible it's destroyed. At this point I started to understand how coding works. Now I know that this statement of code is used to detect collisions. This statement detects what the object has collided with. If it has a tag called pickup, the collectible gets set to false. You see, I'm learning. Now that we have collectibles, we need to display the player's score. Up to this point, I've been fiddling around with the 3D aspect of Unity, but this episode of the series introduced me to UI. I learned how to create a canvas and add text over the screen. I created the score text that changes when the player collides with a collectible. Apparently, it was as easy as count equals count plus one. To change the text, tutorial guy said to type this. I'm not really sure what it means, but it works. Damn, <laughs> what a fun game. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, right now there's no way to win, and that's kind of a problem. I made another text saying, you win, that's displayed in the middle of the screen. It's disabled at the start of the game and is enabled when you collect all the collectibles. Collect all the collectibles. <laughs> collect. <laughs> the tutorial guy taught me how to build the game. Building the game turns it into an application that can be run like a normal game. <sighs> I finally finished the tutorial. It took a few days, but everything seemed to be working fine. I had a fully functional game. Kinda. But I still wasn't satisfied with it. I wanted to add more features to spice the game up. With my newly found knowledge, I can add my own features without any help. 
this is gonna be great, isn't it? So first of all, you can't lose. And you can't have a game without losing, because what's the fucking point in playing? So I made the walls deadly. I used the knowledge I learned from the collectibles to detect collisions with the tag obstacles. When the player collides with an obstacle, the game over function is called. A panel with a red tint and text saying game over is displayed. There are also two buttons you can click. Play again and menu. I achieved this by creating a panel and adding components such as buttons and text, and disabling and enabling it through code. I also added a little blue trail behind the player. I added a jump mechanic by using other tutorials on YouTube. It was quite simple as it uses the rigid body component as well. Remember, the one that gives objects physics? Yeah, anyways. Instead of adding a force from left to right, which is what I did for the player movement, I added a force going up because that's what jumping is. I also had to make something called ground checking. This just prevents the player from jumping while mid-air. After the jump, I added a pile drive move. When the player is in the air and they press shift, they smash into the ground. This was inspired by Wrecking Ball from Overwatch. This move is basically the opposite of the jump mechanic. Instead of add force transform dot up, it's transform dot down. Big brain. Right now the player is restricted to one platform, so I added two new platforms that are connected by planks. On the second platform, there's a jump pad and it leads to the third platform. I created the jump pad by adding a force up to the player when they enter the trigger. As you can see, I'm using the knowledge I learned from the oh. tutorial guy and combining them to make my own features. I hope he's proud of me. Let's test out the game so far. Yeah, so we, we really need sounds. Like badly. So I went to my trusty friend YouTube and searched up how to add sound effects to your game. Brackies recommended this application called BFXR. You create simple sounds using this program and import it to your game. I made a sound effect for jumping, jump pads, picking up coins, and pile driving. I slapped them into Unity and now we have sounds. All I had to do was to execute code that plays the sound whenever I wanted to play. And with a bit of that, we now have sounds in our game. This makes the game more lively and feel more complete. Anyways, we all know that great games have special abilities. So I created these beans, uh, I mean pills, that each have special power-ups. The blue one gives the player a shield around them. It doesn't work, so it's basically just for aesthetics. This was achieved by creating a transparent sphere over the player and disabling it at the start. When the pill is consumed, the shield is enabled. The purple pill enlarges the player and the orange pill shrinks them. Pretty self-explanatory. I made these by manipulating the player's size through code when the pills are triggered. Last but not least, the green pill. This pill turns the player into flat. His speed increases, but it also makes it hard to maneuver around the course. Every feature I've added so far has been quite easy, so I challenged myself and decided to add enemies, like fully working grown as annoying as enemies that follow the player and attack them when they're close. Once again, I turned to my good friend YouTube. I found a Brachy's video about enemy movement and damaging. It was part of his RPG series. In this video, he tells me to download Navmesh components. I downloaded the extension and continued to follow the tutorial. I don't want to bore you with all the information, so so basically, I just did this, that, and a bit of that, and we now have functional enemies! Yay! The player has three hearts that are displayed in the top left corner. The enemy damages the player when they get close enough and removes one heart. If the player reaches zero hearts, they explode and the game ends. If you want to learn more about this, watch this YouTube video by Brackies. This was an amazing experience. It was extremely daunting to start, but as I followed the tutorial and fiddled around with Unity, I started to understand the basics. It's basically like learning a new language, a language that your computer can understand. You need to learn how to communicate with Unity, and once you've grasped that idea, it's pretty easy from there. I hope this video inspired any aspiring game devs out there. Keep working hard, you'll succeed one day. Good luck on your game dev journey, that's it for me, peace. Bye. Bye.